Hello and welcome to another lesson about formal language theory. Um, in the last video we started talking a little bit about um, what we mean by rules in a formal grammar um, and in this uh, video we are going to talk a lot more about the details of defining a formal grammar um, and, and now that we know what kind of rules we're making how do we define those rules as well. So in the last video, we made uh, uh, several uh, uh, like tree structures like this, showing how we can derive a um, series, we can derive a string based on a series of rules. And we used as our examples the rules of propositional logic, right? So we start with a well-formed formula. A well-formed formula can be made up of this symbol followed by a well-formed formula, followed by this symbol, followed by a well-formed formula, followed by this symbol. A well-formed formula can be made up of an uh, atomic statement, and an atomic statement can be made up of Q or P, P or Q or any other lowercase letter. There's several things that you can make up of an atomic statement. And so this is a method by which we can show that something at the top, some sort of statement, can be broken down into something at the bottom. Um, and we said that R is going to be a set of those rules, right? So, so we know that any formal grammar has to have a set of rules that will do this. But if you're making a set of rules, there's really um, several different types of symbols um, that are being used here. And in our grammar, we have to specify which symbols we're using are from which of those sets of, of, of symbols, right? So we've already got this, this nice contrast, which I just did originally to make it clearer to you what the final statement is going to look like between these blue ones and the black ones, right? So we have the symbols here that are our um, are capital letter symbols, um, and they're not actually going to show up in any of the produced strings, right? So once we get the string that is in the language that we're making, um, those are going to be our blue symbols here, right? Um, and these types of symbols are called uh, are, are the symbols used in the uh, in 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 the set of rules that are part of the alphabet for the language, right? So these are part of the things that will show up in the resulting strings, right? So if you are a symbol in R um, that's involved in R that actually is part of one of the uh, of the alphabet of your language, then you are part of a set um, V subscript T. Um, which are called terminal nodes. And they're called terminal nodes because if you sort of follow one of these um, chains to its termination, to its end, um, you find one of, one of these symbols. You find a terminal node there. And so those are, are terminal nodes, and we have to specify when we're writing a formal grammar which of our nodes are terminal and which are not. Um, so we also have these symbols that we've created for our grammar but which never actually show up in the resulting string. So we never actually see a capital letter A in any um, well-formed formula of, formal, uh, of propositional logic, right? Because that wouldn't be a well-formed formula if they're capital letters, for example. Um, but we do need to specify them in our definition of our grammar because we use them, right? We have to, we have to say what are, our symbols, what are our symbols that we can use in our grammar that maybe can't show up in the, in the sentences we push out of our machine, right? So you can think of these as the inside of the machine that you're building, right? Um, we call these sorts of symbols non-terminal nodes because they're not at the terminals. Um, and they go into another set, which is V subscript N um, for non-terminal. So these are terminal and non-terminal. And we need to specify what are these two. So this is like the set of gears inside your machine. Um, these are this set of pieces that get spewed out of your machine in different orders. And, and, and this is um, how we make our machine work. Um, there's one last thing we have to specify though, um, because you're not allowed to take this and try to break it into an atomic statement, right? You have to start with the assumption that it's a well-formed formula, or maybe you're building it up, but we can't just stop at the point where you've built an atomic statement, right? There has to be something that says, the goal is to produce a well-formed formula, and once you have something that's a W, then it's a member of your set of, of then it's a member of L, right? It's part of your language. Once it's a well-formed formula, then it's a, it, it's a it's a member of your language, and you can't just start at stop at a atomic statement, right? Um, and so to do this, we specify one more thing, which is S, 
which is just a which is just a member of your non-terminal set of nodes, right? It's just a member. Of, it's just one of your gears, um, and it's the first gear you go through, right? It's the first. Um, it's the first station inside your machine, and we call this the start symbol or the root node, um, uh, which is the one that goes at the top, right? And so you have to specify which of your which out of this set of um, of processes that of, of states that you're going to go through is going to be the one you start with. Um, and so in the end, when you have a grammar, you have a set of, of, of things. You have a set of terminal nodes, which are all the things which is essentially going to be the alphabet of your language. Um, you have a set of non-terminal nodes, which is um, which are things that we use in order to build our language that we that aren't actually part of the language um, we have a start state which is the first the first non-terminal node that goes at the top of your of your derivation tree and then you have your set of rules right um, and your set of rules are going to be of a certain form um, and 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 you can derive the rules using the process that we're about to talk about so this is this is a very complicated thing, which is based on a definition which you can read in your book. But I'm just going to walk through this definition of R. So this is a more formal definition of R, obviously, than the definition that I gave you in the last video, um, which basically just said your rules have to have the following form. Right? Whoops, that's too many lumps. Right. That was basically what your what the definition said before. This is clearly more complicated than that. So a rule um, relies on this. So sigma is the union of the set of non-terminal nodes and the set of terminal nodes. So notice that this is not the alphabet of L because the terminal nodes are going to be your alphabet of L, right? So we are building a more complicated alphabet here. This is going to be an alphabet that we use in the R language, right? So you can think of R as sort of being its own language. We're building a temporary helpful language inside our definition of another language, right? So this is going to be another alphabet of a language, um, which is made up of any symbol that is a non-terminal symbol or any symbol that is a terminal signal symbol. So if we're talking about this, this um, uh, uh, for, for, for propositional logic, our alphabet for the full language is going to be things like P, Q, R, and then our operator symbols and then our arrow symbols, but you don't get to have W, capital W, be a member of your alphabet, right? You don't get to have capital A be a member of your alphabet, right? So those are not a mem not members of the of the alphabet of propositional logic, but they will be members of this set sigma that we're building, right? So because those are non-terminal nodes and we're taking the union of the non-terminal nodes and the terminal nodes. All right, so if you take sigma to be that, which is not the same thing as sigma for your full language, then R is a finite set of ordered pairs such that, and here's where it gets crazy again, R is a subset of sigma star terminal node, or non-terminal node, sigma star cross sigma star. What does this mean? This means that you're creating a set of ordered pairs, right, of this sort, such that the left side um, is drawn from some possible ordering of non-terminal and terminal nodes, and then a non-terminal node, and then some ordering of terminal and non-terminal nodes, and then the right side is just some ordering of terminal and non-terminal nodes. So what does this really mean? This really means that the left side of each pair has to have a terminal node, non-terminal node. while the right side can be terminal, non-terminal, or both, right? Terminal, non-terminal, 
or both. Right, so that's all that this really complicated statement means is that you have a set of ordered pairs that are drawn from this, that are, that are sort of some ordering of terminal and non-terminal nodes, right? Any, any order of these symbols um, at, on one side and any order of these symbols on the other side, but you have to have a non-terminal node on the left. So that's all that this crazy, crazy statement means is that you have to have a non-terminal node on the left side of each of your rules. So when you're building a rule, this would not be a permissible rule. You couldn't make a rule like this, but you could make a rule like this. Right? Or you could make a rule like, like, like this. Right? That would be an acceptable rule too, but as long as, long as you have a non-terminal node on the left side, it's permissible. Only when you have only terminal nodes on the left side is it not an appropriate rule. And, and what this is also saying is that we're rephrasing these rules um, in our formal definition as um, something like a well-formed formula is made up of an atomic statement or a well-formed formula is made up of not and then a well-formed formula, right? So it's just meanings that we're rephrasing exactly how we're putting these into a set and R is just a set of these things um, uh, and it's finite, right? That's important. You can't have an infinite set of rules. All right, um, so this has been a, um, a description of how we define a formal grammar um, in formal language theory.